It's lovely. Good evening, Zambia. Good evening, Africa. And warm welcome to State of the Nation with me, Innocent Peer. You can simply call me IP. Thank you so much for having joined us. We are broadcasting to you from Zambia's capital city, Lusaka. And of course, this evening, we continue discussing matters that are pertinent to the country of Zambia vis-a-vis -vis the democracy or democratic space in our country and also the rule of law adherence by both those in the power and those outside government. So many concerns have been raised in the couple of uh, years now from the time the United Party for National Development, UPND, uh, formed government with some stakeholders, critical stakeholders, uh, pointing fingers at the UPND of being a failed government, while others that are pro-government or sympathetic to the government uh, says the UPND government is on course in as far as developing the country is concerned. A few months ago, we did read, read some of uh, the concerns later that came through from institutions, organizations such as our civic duties or CEDA that express a number of issues among them, the abuse in the rule of law under the United Party for National Development, UPND, uh, the interference in the judiciary, among others, including Parliament. Other institutions that joined OSIDA were the Law Association of Zambia that also came on board expressing concern on a number of issues. But besides all this, government still believes that everything is under control. This evening, we look at issues of uh, governance in Zambia. My guest is a civil rights activist and good governance advocate, Mr. Brebina Changala. He joins me on set. Good evening and welcome to the program. Good evening and uh, good evening viewers. Allow me to welcome you to KBN um, for the first time. Thank welcome. You. Thank you. Right. The pleasure is mine. How have you been? <laughs> oh, God is gracious. Mm. Um, I celebrated my birthday just the other day on Saturday right. with my family. Um, it's been wonderful right. uh, to reach this far. Mm. I've lost many along the way. Uh, right. You know, generational shift. Mm. Uh, the more you grow older, the more you have few friends. Right. Yeah. The, the younger you are, the multitude of friends. Mm. <laughs> it's a blessing. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Let's get into it, Mr. Changala. You've been very instrumental uh, to the governance of Zambia. And uh, let's find out. You were among the people that, you know, um, highly criticized the PF administration of yeah. Edgar Chagualungu. Yeah. And you called ECL as a tyrant at the time. Yes. Uh, let's see, where are we now? Is this Zambia you wanted. How would you describe mm -hmm. Zambia's governance in a nutshell, just maybe in one word? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I've been around for a while mm. and many times I do rise to the occasion to participate in our national uh, politics and civic uh, uh, duties. I indeed was one of the serious advocates against the Patriotic Front mm. uh, because they had uh, started governing this country in a very unusual way. The rule of law had broken down. Uh, the economy was in disarray and the abuse of power became the order of the day. Mm. And we, we rose as Wasida, others rose as political party, and in this case, the UPND. And the UPND gave us a lot of hope while in the opposition that they were going to do things differently. Mm. And indeed, we got too close, those of uh, many of us who wanted change and we didn't want that change to slip away. And you know there were many political parties, but we zeroed in in the UPND and tried to turn it into not only as a political party, but a, a special purpose vehicle mm. to put an end 
to the patriotic front's mismanagement of state affairs. Mm. Fast forward, we did in August 2021 change government and uh, we all celebrated. Right. Period of forming government by the UPND, many concerns were raised by those who would have known Mr. Akainde, by those who would have known the UPND. But we all agreed in unison that those issues will be sorted out when we cross the river. Mm. What was important was to remove the PF and so that we can have um, a breath of fresh air. Mm. And the UPND indeed formed government on the 24th of August, if I'm not mistaken, mm. 2021. And thereafter, um, with our spirit of commitment that we needed to do things differently. Mind you, mm. the UPND came to power on the backbone of change. It came to power on the backbone of the restoration of the rule of law. And it came to power to come and fix the broken economy um, and other challenges in our social uh, uh, sector. Mm. And when Mr. Againde started forming government, we started noticing uh, a one-man army mm. that was not consulting so as interested parties could, put, could have an uh, input. But however, there was this challenge we faced where everybody said, let's give him time. Let's give him time. Uh, he's learning um, on the job. Mm. Or it was more or less job on training. But even a job on training, you must listen to those who have been there before. So uh, we started noticing uh, that we had lost the man. Because there were low-hanging fruits which we wanted the man to attend to very, very, very quickly. Mm, which ones were those? And that is the police. We needed to have some structural changes in the way the police are managed, in the way the police run the affairs of national security as they maintain law and order. We needed to have a police that was professional, a police that would not abuse the citizens, as it were, mm. in, the, in the previous regime. And to do that, we needed to change, I think, their training. We needed to change the style of command. As you know, at the moment, or previously, it has always been that the Inspector General of Police falls under the Minister of Home Affairs. And the Minister of Home Affairs is a politician and is an interested party when it comes to civic and um, application of the law uh, when it comes to other opposing forces, mm. the, like the civil society, the, the, the political parties. So we, we wanted a situation where the IG um, should report to, an, to a more or less a independent individual like the Attorney General. The President will appoint the IG, ratified by Parliament, and maintain law and order in the country mm. with the full support of the legal advisor of the state, the Attorney General, where the politician, the Minister of Home Affairs, 
must stay away to avoid the abuse. But what we have seen, the status quo has continued. The police brutality has even got worse because nothing has changed. Mm. What has changed is where Kampiongo was, there is Jack Mwimbu. Where Kanganja was, there is this stranger from the space, uh, Musamba. And uh, the command is the same. And these are men and women in uniform who are supposed to save every individual. And yet they are abused by the politicians to save the, the interests of a political party. When you Other say than, that they are, they are abused, you, you are using very strong words mm. that you are, they are abused by the politician yeah. to save their interest. Yeah. When you allege that they are being abused, what are you talking about? I want you to be precise. Um, you don't need to be a rocket scientist. Mm. That police or policemen or police women, they are trained. But there are times they do extraordinary things that do not fit in in their work culture. Mm. For example, the Constitution allows political parties, civil society, the right to assemble, the right to associate, mm. as long as they can give the police in any area seven days notice. Seven days mm. notice that we shall hold a rally in Kamwara. Their job is to get that notice, uh, check on that date, whether there is no other event that is taking place. If there is another event, they will advise. It's not a secret. They will tell you what tower people are holding their... Um, they are, they, they are retreat there. So look for another venue or look for another date. That aside, mm. now, the police out of their own politicized position have brought in the word permit. It's nowhere. The police do not give permits. And the police are not regulators of my freedom to assemble my freedom to associate doesn't give them those powers mm. but when you give them notice you open a pandora box and especially when the economy is not working the police will come to say you cannot hold that rally we don't have the manpower many times we don't even need that manpower in recent times they have brought the word the the security is not the security of the nation is not uh, is not okay now you only know about the security issues when you want to order rally and the zambian the, the our country is not under the state of emergency and what they will do further they don't have the manpower the day you want to go because you have a right you have given them notice you have fulfilled the conditions. The day you want to hold the rally, they will be there at 5 a.m. They have time to waste. They have resources to waste. And Mr. Haka Inde was supposed to attend to that. But he's enjoying it with a smile. They will invade the venue with the, this newfound military vehicles called Campiongos with 600, 800 policemen start loitering as if they are also holding a rally there. Threatening peace. Actually, that's what I call them. They go there armed, trying to face and armed people. No wonder they shoot people. They are provoked. Nobody has provoked them. Political parties are established to market themselves and be an alternative government. Not a threat to a government. No. They are there to sell their ideas. They were registered for a purpose. Not to be praise singers of a ruling party. No. But to challenge the ruling party and put them on their toes that you can run the country better. 
How best, uh, uh, Mr. Changala, can we, you know, um, harmonize these concerns? How can we ensure that we, once and for all, deal with these you know, gray areas that you've uh, just raised? Because you are aware, you've been a governance activist for quite a long time. For a long time. In that these are constitutional issues, and you've rightly put it that uh, the issue of permit is not there. It's not but there. This trend seems to be continuing. Yeah, so where is me, the problem? The and problem is the solution. The, we, we, we've discovered a problem here, but I want us to give the solution. The solution is we are, we are electing humble men and women while in opposition. Hmm. When in actual fact, we are electing criminals in, in, in ship skin. You wouldn't believe a second that the UPND administration under Mr. Hakainde Chisema could conduct themselves in the manner they are conducting themselves. Mm. These are mm. men and women who suffered under the previous regime in the most untold manner and style. And one would have thought, because they suffered so much, they have a solution on how to treat other citizens. Mm. We saw a solution that these people who were always on the run with the state police will come and reorganize the way we are governed. They will follow the constitution to the letter. Mm. They will be the change that we have always wanted. The laws of this land are not a problem. The problem is the men and women we elect. They are dishonest. They are treacherous. And they, they are highly abusive. Because they go there not to save, but to save themselves. In this one moment that we face today, UPND, without shame, they have come to avenge and revenge. You can tell the way they are handling the patriotic front. How they are treating them. The president says one thing, that don't arrest anybody if you haven't investigated. And when you arrest somebody, if the case is bondable, charge him and give him bond. If he meets the bond conditions, let him go home. They are keeping people one week. They are arresting people by breaking their doors. Totally barbaric. And President Akainde Ichilema is the commander-in-chief. And he has said nothing to the conduct of the police because he's enjoying. Now he's the king. Can we spare mm. President Akende Shilema for a moment and say and blame mm. the, 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 the implementers of the law? Because who are those? the president, these are the police officers uh, who are being, you know, uh, uh, governed or controlled by either the IG and their various no. officers. No. Because President Akende Shilema has rightly put it that, look, I do not want any citizen to pass through the trauma which I went through myself in the opposition. I was arrested so many times. I was incarcerated so many times. And therefore, the script, the bad script which was used against me by those who were in power under the MMD of Manawasa, under the MMD of um, um, uh, Arabi, of uh, Michael Shrofiasata, uh, of ECAO, should not be repeated. So, should we continue blaming President Agende Shema? Yes. When again we've been told that there is that total independence, autonomy, there is no autonomy over the, the police. No, not at all. The president is the commander in chief, and the box stops at him. When he was in opposition, every time he was arrested, it was Lungu who had arrested him. Why should it change now? The abuse of today is HH. He has sanctioned this banditry and is in charge of this criminality that is prevailing today. He knows very well, Zambians voted for him for change. They voted for UPND and the HH to restore the rule of law. Not this lawlessness we are seeing. 
Mm. This is under his watch with his command. Let him not tell us that he doesn't know what is going on. He knows. And some of these things, I can tell you, with my sixth sense, that is behind this chaos. Mm. I, can't, I, can't, I can't exclude him. Not at all. Unless he, he tells me that he's not in charge. But he has told us he's in charge and he will be playing Mingalato. Himself. Self-confession. So why should you acquit him? Is part of the problem. A church is a problem. Ooh. Tell me something else. Something else that you are yeah. being so personal against President Akende <laughs> I'm not being personal. He voluntarily <laughs> applied for this job. He lost five times. He consistently, persistently wanted to come and govern this country. Nothing personal. He's the seventh president. And he's my colleague. He's a friend of mine. But when it comes to national matters, friendship is first placed on ice. The nation comes first. So there is nothing personal. This is voluntary work. If we are abusing him, he can easily give way. ECL was called all sorts of names. There was nothing personal. Today, if there was something personal, I can't go to ECL's house and have a meal with him. He realizes that my go for him, or see that going for him, campaigning against him, was in national interest. When he lost an election, we went to greet him mm. and wished him well. Nothing personal. If there was anything personal when he was president, we, that uh, personal challenges or difficulties that we had with him could have continued up to today. This is nothing personal with Mr. Akainde. These are national issues which we cannot allow to... You've go. got a friend in the President Akainde. Of right? course, yes. Based on your compassion. Yeah. Um, what is he saying? What has he said to you when you speak to him, you know, um, in, in camera, away from, you know, this discourse we are having, a public discourse? Have you spoken to your colleague in the name of President Akainde about all these concerns that you have? The president knows my position. Mm. And uh, what he said behind the scenes, I cannot come and say. He, he has got every right to say it public. He's in a stronger position. I cannot betray his confidence. Um, he knows my position. is very strong. My positions are very strong. Mm. For a colleague like HH, who we walked shoulder to shoulder during his time in opposition, to come and fiercely differ, which means somewhere, somehow, we have not agreed. I feel cheated. For example, let me tell you, our viewers, it's my position, well known to the President Akainde Ichirema, that when he formed government, the first thing he should have done was to abolish the office of the district commissioner. This commission is not supposed to be with us, but it is. When you formed government... So let's uh, move in, seg in segmented, I know, uh, uh, conversation. When you advocate for the abolishment of the DC's office, yeah. why do you think that office is not important to the national development? It is... A DC office doesn't add value to our governance system. In it is... Way? Uh, let me explain. Yes, please. That office is more or less a reward office for a ruling party. The, I can give you a good example. Mm. The, in a by-election, the DCs are abused to assist the ruling party to campaign. That is an office that only entertains the ruling party. The opposition, PF cannot go to a DC's office in Chadiza. He, will, he, he or she will just refuse. 
Now, this is an office where a ruling party places their cadres on a government payroll on, in the treasury. Mm. Totally eating state funds for doing party, uh, uh, party assignments mm. and activities. So it has to go until we find the real issue and use of the DC, like the permanent secretary. Wherever you go in the ministry, you will know the role of a permanent secretary. Even if you are in opposition, you want something from the ministry, you can see the PS and you'll be entertained there. Mm. The DC is a tall, is a tall order. That is one. Yeah. Before, let, let's move on. Yes. The boards that run parastatos. Boards. It is an agreed position that a minister will appoint a board, let's say Zesco, or a board for NAPSA, but that board must be ratified by parliament. Those who are not suitable, parliament will save and remove certain names and individuals. This is proper good governance. And once the board is ratified, Mr. Akainde knows this. Once the board is ratified and it goes to run in APSA or ZRA or ZESCO, that board will be independent of the minister. No interference. And neither can the minister dissolve that board. If the board starts misbehaving, the minister will go to parliament and raise issues. So parliament will summon the board. So on this side, there will be the government ministry. Energy minister will be this side. The board will be this side. In between, there will be parliament. So parliament will say, when a minister, tell us the board, what the board has been doing. When the minister speaks, the board will answer. Can you defend yourself? So the parliament, parliamentary select committee, at the end of the day, will sit down, listen to both sides and make a resolution. Either to recommend to the minister to dissolve that board or to say kudos to the board. You are doing things very well. Because right now, boards don't function because they are run by the line ministers. They appoint a board, but the one calling the shots is the line minister. So why doesn't the minister just run the... the the, the parastato. Why put an encumbrance there? Why put a board? Mm. If you can't allow it to... The board must appoint the CEO of that company. But you find the board is appointed by the minister. The CEO is appointed by the president. Tell me, how can the board manage this man, this big-headed man who has been appointed by the president? How would it... It won't work. And what is this, what is your friend saying? Mm -hmm. What has been the justification of uh, him maintaining the office of the DC? No, among you know, no, other controversial. He has just been untruthful because what, when you say something to somebody, your word must be a bond. We came on a platform of change, but we are working in a manner as. If nothing changed in August 2021, mm. only faces changed. Where there was ECL, there is now HH. Where there was uh, Madame Wina, there is Narumango. Nothing has changed. There is a lot of dishonest. And I speak with a heavy heart. There is a lot of dishonest. At least we should have... Look at the IDC. The president is the chairman of IDC. When he was in opposition, he condemned that. He's now president. Instead of changing, it's just a piece of legislation. Go to parliament and change. So that the IDC is independent. Mm. Somebody asked him a question at a press conference or press briefing. And his answer was, but that's, I found it. So why do you want me to change? Eh? I'm not the one who, who made the president to be the chairman of IDC. I found it. Now, when you look at that and you get such answers, 
The path to hell is very wide. Don't cheat in order to assume power. Say the truth like Jeremy and, uh, and you never be a president. Mm. Stick to the truth. We've been on this mm. path for a long period of time, Mr. Mm. Changala, most especially for people like you in the governance circles as the advocates. I want to believe that uh, for us to make amends and change the structures in the now governance system, we can't do this without you know, looking at the larger aspect of the constitution. And there's been a number of you know, attempts to you know, establishing a stronger or a durable constitution. Uh, we can talk about the Mvunga constitution, the Monakato has been there, the Mwomba, among others. Why the delay? Why at 59 years of Zambia's independence have we failed to come, uh, come up with a, a constitution which can speak to all these issues, all these concerns we've been advancing? We can't have a constitution that will <laughs> outlive us because we are dealing with very dishonest elected politicians. They actually know what the people of Zambia want. Let me give you a simple, mm. a, a, a simple example where you see dishonest. <clears throat> the president of the Republic of Zambia has refused to declare assets. And the Honorable Moeto says there is no piece of legislation. But he's busy rounding up near every Jim and Jack for failing to account. Courts are loaded with people's assets restricted, frozen, uh, suspicious transactions, accounts, uh, bank accounts restricted because they are failing to account. And he's the man pushing that agenda. And yet himself is politely asked, show leadership, that what you are asking others to do, you are able to do it. Because one day, you are equally going to be asked to account. Now, he has gone into power with this... Um, quote unquote, that is the richest man. No figures, no nothing, is the richest man. So nobody must ask him how he, how he built the community house. Nobody must ask him. But I've said You don't it, believe that he's the richest man in course in course? No, I don't, I don't believe that. Yeah. I believe in reality. I, I, I don't believe that. Um, those who believe, I wish them well. Now, I have said it publicly that somebody mischievous will come after him. Mm. That community house will be a story for another day. And you remember me. He will not just say, but when I became president, I had this house because I was the richest man. He must put those richness to paper. Because I've lived a life where I, where I saw Tom Tin, may he so rest in peace. Mm. These were richest people in this country. Humphrey Muremba, BY, because you could see the infrastructure, you could meet people who would tell you, where do you work? I work for BY Humes, uh, I work for Lone Rock, group of companies, Tom Tin, um, I work for Elia Monza, the biggest, richest man in Kabwe, Kabwe town. Uh, he used to run football, Kabwe Warriors. You mm. might not know him. Um, these were rich guys. Robinson, Chindanda, Manasse. We had uh, this man in Mukushi, Kosteni, Chilala. Mm. Um, these were rich people. Not by word of mouth, but by sight. Now, that aside... What haven't you heard about President Akendishema when you begin to doubt even his... You know, um, ascenders to power and also his wealth because he has from time to time yeah. I, 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 I mean updated the country that this is a person who has been you know a, a businessman all along uh, this is a person who has been you know uh, keeping animals that 
could have also contributed to the wealth which he has today. Why should you be no, no, no. begin to, to you doubt see, his wealth? Let, let me put Mr. it this Chandler. way. Let mm. me put it this yeah. way. Let, let, let's not go personal. Yeah. I have a right to doubt certain things. Mm. He's not the only man in Jerusalem who keeps animals. There are many. What I, maybe let me put it this way. I consider my brother HH as comfortable. GBM is comfortable. Robinson Zulu of Minwood is comfortable. Muila mm. Lumbwe uh, is comfortable. There are many. Um, let's not uh, start arguing about how much he has got. He has failed. He, he has refused to declare. For me, that's a big issue. Mm. Yes. But he can't push me to believe that he's the richest man. No. I know Mark Zuckerberg is rich. I know Bill Gates is rich. I know Richard Branson of Virgin, uh, Virgin Group of Government is rich. Mm. So don't bring me when to that. When we were guided mm. the nation, that uh, President mm. Agendeshema, he can't do that. Uh, and you have no rocker standard to force him because he already declared his assets and liabilities when he was fighting in the nomination for 2021. And uh, at the same time, he said there is no law. So why are you pushing so hard? Why is he queuing up people to the court of law for failing to account? What is good for a geese is good for a gander. Should we leave out those who might have you know, gotten wealth using mm -hmm. illegal means or using corruption? Because that was one of the pledges which President Hagen Richman made and the UPN that, that, that will come that, in yes, will yes. pass the corruption to the, to, to the end. Yes. Are you sympathetic and, and, to the corrupt? No, not at all. In fact, we supported him to come mm. and fight the corruption, which I can tell you, unfortunately, has collapsed because it's selective. You can't fight corruption one-sided. You only fight those who left office. What about those who are corrupt today? Who are, the, who are those who are corrupt in the UPND government today, whom we have seen you... Mr. Chandala, I, I I, in comparison to some people who were in the past administration. Even those in the past administration have not seen them being corrupt. So I'm unable to see even these who are not corrupt. But the law enforcement officers mm. who are drawing a salary and allowances, they know who they are. And they are plenty. Yeah. There is a lot of single sourcing in federalism. None of them has been challenged. Mm. There is the issue of the Solicitor General, Mujende, and the house in Ibex, which has d just died a, a natural death. That issue of the Solicitor General is real. And when I say it's real, because that's what the SEC Director General, uh, Tom Shamakamba, told us. Mm. I had gone to see Tom Shamakamba on the issue of the former Auditor General, Dix Chembe, mm. when he was accused of collecting or receiving uh, illegal allowances with those other 18 people, that as OSIDA, under the chairmanship of uh, Emeritus Archbishop Mpundu, I went to see Tom. And that was in the month of uh, March, April. And I told him these arrests of uh, Auditor General and these colleagues is tribal. Because the people who have been arrested were from one region, and yet the people who received the allowances were 3,500. And he confirmed that figure. But they are isolated 18 individuals. Then he went further, gave me unsolicited information, totally unsolicited. Let Tom challenge me. He told me. In, in the next one week, this is in March, April, eh? mm. I'm, I'm arresting the Solicitor General because of the house in Ibex. Himself, Tom. And I said, eh? Now, that matter has been hush, 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 hush. Did you use the mm. word, I'm arresting I am. the law enforcers? Who no, arrested. him. He had a docket. And I'm challenging him. And I've raised this matter internally there. Eh? Mm -hmm. Then we had the issue with um, P.S. Muguri 
because Mukuri, like Dix Chembe, was one of the people who received the allowances. Now, Mukuri was never suspended, nor was he named and shamed like his colleagues. We had to put pressure for Mukuri to be suspended. First, he was not even suspended. He was sent to the holding cell. I call it the holding cell, cabinet office, where they are sending everybody who falls out of favor. You know, they are running this, this government like a meek mouse. It's, it's, it's very sad. I must say, I'm very sad because I didn't expect we would be, reach this. You've been quoted, um, you know, in the media. Just recently, you issued a statement in, at which you were pointing or accusing the UPND government of being a tribal, you know, uh, system. You, you've been on record accusing President Akandeshema and his government of appointing people from certain region. Quite tribalistic remarks coming from a leader like you. Before you proceed, I think, to justify this, let's mm. play this clip, and then from there we engage you. Thank you. I hope directly the clip is right. Yeah. In the recent months, we have seen appointments which have raised eyebrows. And he has ignored them. Because Mr. Hakainde does not care when people complain. Main appointments to critical institutions in our country are now reserved and the preserve of our colleagues in southern province, western, and to a lesser extent, northwestern. The president must be sensitive. When people talk, they talk because there is a problem. The Tribalism that is being exercised in the exercise of duty by this administration is worrisome. Me know. All right, thank you so much. Uh, that's the video there, or at which uh, Mr. Changala, my guest this evening, was uh, being quoted and uh, having pointed out you know, some strong allegation against the UPND government. Mr. Changala, when you listen to yourself now for the yeah. second time do you still believe in what you said nothing has changed because you see this um, tribalism favoritism regionalism has become the flagship of this administration because all institution of governance and the critical institution in our country have been taken over. Mr. Hakainde has done it deliberately in order to reward those who were marginalized. He, he uses that word a lot. Those from regions which were marginalized. And those who have run this country for the last 59 years are there to second those who were marginalized. And I don't need to tell you, you just need to ask me, who is heading that ministry? And I will answer, who is heading that institution? Mm. For example, I had a bitter quarrel with my president, Mr. Akainde Ichirema, when he appointed Mwangara Zarumis, who was my lawyer, as head of uh, the Electoral Commission of Zambia. I did tell him that you, for the five, six elections that you competed in, which were headed by judges, Judge Florence Mumba, uh, Judge Irene Mambirima, Judge Chulu, I, I, I think I've left out Judge Bobby Bualia or whoever, you never accepted those elections because you called them rigged. Now, how do you expect Tishimba Gambwiri to accept the results from Madam Wangala Zalomis, a UPND top senior member? Mm. You must be sensitive. 
Historically, the Electoral Commission of Zambia has been headed by a judge, a retired judge. They might have their own political inclination, but it was not known. And I had a huge confrontation with the president. I said, you are not sensitive. Nobody is going to accept the results that will be read by that lady. For the very fact that she is a strong, loyal member of a participating political party. Are we trying yeah. to yeah. put a caveat to anyone who might have supported the UPND or sympathize with the UPND on account mm -hmm. that you even, it doesn't matter whether you are qualified or not, but for as long as you are a UPND supporter, mm -hmm. you are not eligible to serve in government. That's the notion you're trying to say. No, no. They have always served in government. Mm -hmm. If you have seen the appointments that Mr. Haga Inde Ichirema has made, most of them were civil servants. But he was able to bring them into government because, rather, to, to appoint them to senior levels because they were UPND while they were in government. The current Director General of Intelligence was in the government and was in uh, Kinshasa under ECL. When ECL lost, he flew from Kinshasa to become the, the DG. So, these people have been in the system and we are not fighting them. Mm. We are just trying to say, ECL, when he ran the government, he, he did exclude the southerners, the westerners, and to some extent, the northwesterners. Mm. He did. This man came on a platform. So that is agreed. It is an agreed position, right. yes. Mm. And we fought. Mm. And I'm on the record. I'm on record under his year when he was president. So is it wrong mm. for President Agendishema to also try and consider wrong. those that wrong. are perceived to have been to... marginalized? No, two wrongs don't make a right. His seventh president, where we had Kenneth Kaunda, he managed it nicely. We had Frederick Chiruba, he managed it nicely. We had Levi Patrick Mwanawasa, he did a fantastic job when it came to, they used to call it tribal balancing. We had Rupia Poison Banda, fantastic. We had Michael Chirufia Sata. We even got some UPND, like ritual, uh, some nene, something like that, as ministers and what have you. The problem came in when ECR became president. Mm. That's when these disparities came in. And we rose to the occasion to tell ECR that this is wrong. Because the cabinet of ECL mm. was almost 80% members and 10% Easterners, in exclusion of our colleagues. Mm. Yes. And that's an agreed. And it was condemned. It cannot be perpetuated. We, Mr. Haka Inde and UPND came to power on a platform of change and to do things differently. You can't have critical institutions whatever he fears, God knows, and place them, these men and women uh, who are your confidantes, you must make the entire country full of members who are confidantes if you are a national leader. Mm. Yes. Well, at the moment, sorry to cut you yeah. short, at the moment if you go, everybody is complaining, except me, my, my complaints have refused to set them under the table. My complaints must be open. Wherever you go, even where I came from, everybody is complaining how he has marginalized them. But he's going to defend. No, I've balanced. I've got a, who is this man from Ndola? Uh, Matambo. Mm -hmm. I have got uh, Mutati. Yeah, I've, got, I've got this lady at community. What do you call her? Mwamba. I've got Mwamba. Mm -hmm. But is the positions that he has given them, the diluted positions where they, they, they are non-functional. They don't even call the shots. Look at the, our vice president. Mm. If you came from outer space, you would wonder whether you have a vice president here. She's non-functional. I read somewhere where they were cracking a joke that she doesn't travel because she hasn't got a passport. Somebody was saying, can you speak to Jack Mwimbo to give her a passport? Don't you think, Mr. Um, Changala, you are being malicious, you are being personal? Mm -hmm on the vice president when you allege that uh, she doesn't perform 
her duties. What kind of duties do you anticipate the or expect of, her to be performing, which wait, she is not, not doing? No. The, the vice president, who is the running mate, yeah. operates under the office of the president. Yeah. So her job yeah. is always delegated by the head of state. As the vice president, she doesn't, she can't just wake up today and start doing things of her own. No. This is the more reason that the president is traveling all over the world. He can't even delegate to the vice president to say, Mwana, me have just moved too much, I've got jet lag. There is a big conference, he said, can you go? Now, because you don't trust anybody, you have to do everything. So who is the problem here? Is it the vice president or the president? It's the president. Right. Yes. But, but the, the vice president would do anything that would be delegated. And you are aware that uh, Honebo, you know, uh, Nalumango, Mongo. she's on record, you know, stating or clarifying that, that she's not affected whatsoever. She's more than happy in that office. That she's is, performing all her duties that are mandated or that she's supposed to perform. So why should you complain on her behalf that, that she's is, not performing? That is the humble woman. Let's not even discuss her here. Mm. She's an innocent, humble woman, uh, unfortunately finding herself in the midst of a jungle where they are full of leopards, lions, snakes, and vipers. Mm. Let's leave it there. Let's go to the current happening. Of course, uh, we've seen the elephant in the room. Uh, we have seen some eight members of parliament of the, uh, from the PF uh, said to have been suspended by the Mao Sampa led group. This is a story which has been changing shapes from time to time. It began at a time when Honeb Mao Sampa held a, 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 a retreat which turned into a convention and later on we saw the leader of opposition in parliament being changed with a lot of drama. I know that Osida, you issued a statement. Now I'm privileged to have you in the studio. Where do you think the problem lies in this whole issue? Um, it's a pity that we have to be talking about UPND, even when it's PF. Uh, first and foremost, the convention that was held by Mao Samba was not a convention, that was a, a Mi'kmaq event. But unfortunately, it was supported by the state. If you can see, on Independence Day we were all celebrating. I think you were celebrating. And this is the day when there was a visiting foreign head of state. And there was a function at State House. Investor ceremony. Only to find a live transmission from Murungushi with a truckload of police protecting the so-called uh, convention. And when I saw it, I didn't call anybody. I told my wife that that is state-sponsored. Because this is a government that doesn't allow the opposition to assemble, associate, or indeed communicate. <laughs> And ZNBC carried the event live, a Prime TV carried the event live, and the place was sealed off for the almighty Sam. Sam has got no capacity to, 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 to do that. Yes, no capacity. How do you know? I'm a citizen. I know who can do anything and who cannot do so how do nothing. You, how would you determine that only more Sampa doesn't have the capacity to do what he let, does? Let, let's, he, he, first and foremost, he can't marshal the state police. He's a citizen. Can't. He's entitled to state security. No, no, no. Not that security. I'm entitled as well. We are in one country. I'm entitled. That security was given not even the former president Edgar uh, Chagwalungu uh, has got that uh, state security. Let's not cheat ourselves. That thing was sponsored by State House. And I'm making a serious allegation. Let them rebut. That, was, that is a function from the corridors of State House. Because that's where the commander-in-chief of the armed forces resides. And he, he allowed the IG to move the, trip, the troops from an investor ceremony to go and protect an illegality. Hmm. Thereafter, uh, the deputy IG 
was clearing fingerprints on Independence Day. The documentation is there. The following day, everything moves smoothly. You know Hari Karaba, you know Sabo Imbuera, how they have suffered. And you have heard that video of Akufumba and Levi Ngoma trying to scheme on how to shortchange a political party. We are not children. This criminality and anarchy, which is state-sponsored, will backfire. Because Mao Sampa has been given a party on a silver plate by the, the UPND in exclusion of the multitude of membership. Because no, nobody has moved with him. He has the membership. Uh, yeah. is, he has already appointed the, the, he can the appoint, Secretary General. Yes, he can the appoint. The Deputy Media Director. Listen, listen. Among others, according to him. This is an illegality that will backfire. It will with the benefit of time. Because there is nothing criminal that lasts. Because I can tell you here and now, that convention, the recognition of Mao's in parliament, was nothing but banditry. Because when the real PF wrote to Madam Speaker that we have expelled the following, we have expelled Mao Sampa, she refused. She actually made a ruling. I've got a ruling. Quoting Matibini and uh, Chishimbagambwiri when he, he was expelled by Matibini, the ruling is there. But today, they recognize Mao Sampa and they are moving together like birds of the same feather. They are in Dubai, they are all over the show. And today, Mao Sampa and this clique, they have even got state police, which the former president doesn't go. You can't see anything wrong. Let's, let's stop whispering under the table. These things must come out and be placed on record that there is gangsterism in this country, which is state-sponsored. I'm not PF, but I will not allow our constitutional democracy to be raped in this manner. Whether you like PF or you don't like it, they have got 58 members of parliament there. You seem to have got a lot of information than the information in which the citizens, you know, um, is consuming right now regarding yeah, the they, they, PF, consuming lies. regarding the PF Mao Sampa, you know, saga. Mm -hmm. And you've just made strong allegations pointing at State House that yeah, that course. convention was uh, sponsored, organized by State House. Yeah. Who are those individuals who were solemnly in charge in organizing that event on it, behalf of Mount Honor of Mao Sampa? The man who controls the police. That is uh, the catch. Mm. There is a read there. Who, who commanded? These things will be known one day. Who commanded the troops to go and station themselves at Murungush? And who paid for that conference? Conference hall. That's a government property. Where, 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 <laughs> God forbid. Let's not be treated like children. We are not being governed properly. Democracy in this country is under siege. And certain people must speak out. Mm. You, you don't hold a convention where the entire central committee is not available, where the members of parliament are not available, where the, the councillors, the whole councillors throughout the country are not available, the council chairmen are not available. Those are legitimate delegates. How do you know, Mr. Changala, did you attend that convention to I saw it was the like, building that those uh, individuals have mentioned and those leaders were not available? Did you, you, you are a journalist. Wh wh did were you, you see there? them there? No, how, how many MPs did you see so there? I'm asking you, did you go I there? Didn't. Did you check? But so how do you know? They exposed themselves by making it live, live transmission. They even cheated you that there were 5,000 in that hall. You have to be dull. The number there was less than 300. But they were giving out. This is how they have cheapened the people of Zambia that we are nothing but a bunch of idiots. I don't know how true that is. But I refuse to be one of them. I refuse. Because that is a classic case of state-sponsored anarchy. 
And if you have seen, who is defending Mausab? Very unusual. It's the UPND. Mausab is supposed to be defended by PF membership. But you go to any blog, who defends Mausab? It's the UPND. Hmm. <laughs> Very strange. How can the PF come out? Because already there is a will come there, out. There, 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 there is a confusion already. Well, we've, we, like yesterday, we were subjected to letters of, via social media that he has expelled about nine members of parliament. He, he can even expel all of them. The, 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 the idea there is not for Mao's to get PF. No. It's for Mao's to destroy the paper that binds PF to the con Republican Constitution. So that the membership of Patriotic Front remain partyless. Because a political party must be registered. Mm. Yes. So what these uh, evil men and women are trying to do is to get the paper of the Patriotic Front and put it in Mao's Sampa's pocket. It's yours. You are the party. You are the almighty. So that the general membership, which is angry, and let me warn this uh, UPND. You see, they were elected to maintain law and order and the rule of law. Should there be any faracas or breakdown in the rule of law, they will be sorry to blame. Mm. Because this is playing in the hands of an angry and hungry citizenry. And you don't do that if you are a responsible leader. You don't invite confusion and commotion. Mm. A leader must always be there to promote peace and coexistence. I've got a few minutes, uh, Mr. Changala, before I release you. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, we're having some uh, technical uh, force in terms of the uh, line that uh, we were supposed to call on the program. Of course, we are looking at uh, governance in Zambia, Zambia's governance at risk. That's the question we have on the uh, screen there. You can send in the messages via our social media handle. And of course, uh, let's uh, get into two segments before we end the program. You're watching State of the Nation. All right, unfortunately, I seem to have uh, now some feedback coming through. Uh, we'll come back to you. Let's hear what this caller has this evening. Caller, good evening and welcome to the program. Oh, hello, good evening. Good evening and welcome to the program. Yes, uh, Mr. Changala, how are you? I'm fine and how are you, sir? Thank you very much. You are speaking well. I think you keep it up. Tell us your name, please. Because you, you are a good leader. Uh, Zambia is still on a governor's risk. Because you have spoken well. Me, I'm General Chongo calling from Kabwe. Right, go ahead. You have spoken well, Reva Changala. Ichirete Shumpa Bucharo Jesuitia Zambia Chakutira Ji. Bushe Munga Nganga Valerua. Eh, So, Right. 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 Alright. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, right, you can also call us in the studio. The phone number is on the screen right now. My guest of the program is uh, Mr. Uh, Brebina Changala, who is a civil rights activist. Of course, he's here to analyze a number of issues. Uh, Kola, good evening and welcome to the program. Good evening, thank you. Thank you so much. Tell us your name and you've got a minute. Yes, this is Joseph Kazembe. Please go ahead, Mr. Kazembe. Yes, I'm uh, from Wancha. Right, go ahead. Yes, please. Uh, what I'm trying to, to say is uh, good evening, Mr. Changala. Good, good evening, good evening to you. Uh, right now, my brother, please continue that spirit of being fearless to expound the truth, nothing but the truth. What you have spoken there, you have not insulted anybody, you have not implicated anybody in anything. Uh -uh. You have just spoken nothing but the truth. And because of that truthfulness of yours, especially people from the UK, they are going to hate you. But they must remember and realize that these people love you so much. You are so sincere when you are criticizing PF correctly. Because you, you have you pointed out from the beginning that you actually uh, uh, taught uh, by, uh, our former president mm. what they were, the, the wrong that they were making. Right. And what everybody couldn't understand. Right. You may wind up. The boot were given, I mean, the people were given the boot. Now, this time, it is UPN who has done even worse things than what what you was doing. And because of that, I will only advise you, my brother, please keep it up for those even tired and those even be afraid of anything. Thank you so much. You are talking for the doer of the poorest, majority of the country. Right. Thank you, Thank you so much. All right. I've got 10 minutes before we close the program. I wanted to also have a bite in terms of uh, the you know, much efforts that President Akendishema has been, you know, as is putting up in the last uh, two years of being in power. We've seen him uh, resting a little in the country. He's been in and out for the sake of wanting to restore uh, the economy, the broken economy. And uh, when it comes to the presidential trips, what has been your take in this regards? Yeah, this is where I call hypocrisy. Uh, of the UPND. It is well documented. And the tweets are all over the show. How Mr. Akainde Ichilema condemned his predecessor for tra uh, traveling. He used to say, why go out when the economy is not doing well? You are spending too much on flying out. He comes in, this is what I said, the change we brought in 2021 was an illusion. Hmm. He has traveled in two years he's got three years more to go or two and a half years more to go he has traveled more than 64 times i might i might be corrected and there is very little to show in these trips other than selfies and twitter now this is where i brought in in alumango that if this is a shared vision it's not a one-man vision he must learn to delegate so that even in Arumango, maybe he underrates a, a mental stamina to negotiate or meet investors elsewhere. He should have allowed her to travel also uh, to go and meet whoever they are trying to meet uh, to, to do debt restructuring, uh, build investor confidence. Now, the hypocrisy is what I don't like. And I've been saying it openly that two, police brutality, what else can you say if the man comes into power and he starts doing the same things that his colleagues were doing, which were condemned, which cost the other friends an election. 
It is totally unacceptable. These trips, he must take the people's concerns. Is there to save the interests of the people of Zambia who voted for him. And when they tell him that what you are doing, we don't like it, he must listen. He must not be stubborn. Can the debt be restructured in the absence of uh, the chief marketing officer in the no, name of President? Yeah, yeah, so the, was coined himself as no, the chief marketing officer. No, I don't know what he's marketing. He's marketing himself. Um, he's got a minister of finance, a capable hand. He's got uh, the secretary to the treasury. He's got the Bank of Zambia governor. He's got a huge establishment. He doesn't sit in that, those meetings where the nitty-gritty is done. And no president travels the way he does. This is like a small economy. He keeps on telling us that he found nothing. And the retro that he found is abusing it. Totally abusing it. Mm. He must do what the people are celebrating. And nobody at the moment appreciates his foreign trips. Let it be told to him. Nobody. When you say nobody, Mr. Changala, you are not being realistic because uh, it appears you've carried out a survey, you know, you've got a database, uh, uh, you know, about the whole population of Zambia that everybody's against. Why can't you say some people are not in support of the foreign trips? Why say nobody's in support of that? I live among, among the community mm. which I can call everybody. This is a simple assessment. He actually knows that nobody appreciates his foreign trips. Mm. He knows. But he, he's just trying to challenge. This is my time. I can do what I want. This is the problem he's facing. There is no diplomacy. There is no humility. Uh, he's a know-it-all. No he knows everything, which is a danger. I see a danger in that kind of attitude. You see, Isiero told us at one time that he had no vision. Very, very, very humble. And he said it loosely. I have no vision. But uh, what has made Isiero today, even for everybody to cling to him and follow him, he's not the richest man in town. But there's that car, humbleness, I think which he came, he came with it from Buchi or Chimwemwe, where he was brought up. You know, Isiero is a community player. He, um, he's, he's like Mr. Michael Sata. You know, community player. Very attractive to ordinary citizens. Um, the ordinary people see one of them in Isiero. But with the HH, everybody sees but some of us in them. I'm speaking a street language. But some of us. This year will stop a motor vehicle. And you have seen a lot of pictures when he was present. Start eating a mango in the public. Eating in Shima publicly. The Michael Sata style. Drink water from the tap publicly. Because if the people in Kanyama can drink that water, why can't I? Just because I'm present. You think? Now, our brother who is there now is detached mm. from the. Uh, from our colleagues uh, uh, in the combos, in the combo. I want you to mm. divide the two minutes remaining, Mr. Changala. The first issue, um, the last two weeks, I think the country was abreast, you know, to the many, you know, uh, judgment concerns over compensations of people that were being uh, rewarded for those could be individuals that were humiliated under the PF. One of them is Honorable uh, uh, Tayali, uh, you know, Minister of Transport and Logistics. We also had uh, Mr. Mwalitet among other individuals, including uh, some four or five members of the associates to the president who were incarcerated okay. illegally together with the president. Including Mrs. Six point, exactly, <laughs> 6.4 million kwacha each were given. What has been your position to those compensations? It's a scandal. Unless you have not been there. This is um, looting which is state-sponsored. And uh, I wish this can stop. First and foremost, most of these people have been uh, self-formulated. 
so most of these people have been compensated on a nole. President Jakainde is on a nole. Those his colleagues were on a nole. Um, and there are many people in this country moving on a nole. I speak to you, I, Brebna Changal. I've got eight knowledge. I have got a knowledge. I was about the, to, to ask you whether you are going to sue the, the state. No. That uh, I have got a knowledge with Madame Winonga Wina, mm. the former vice president. I've been with her to jail. And our lawyer was uh, uh, the ECZ chair lady, what do you call her? Mwangala Zaromis. She secured the knowledge for me. I have a knowledge with Emery Sikazwe. I have three knowledge in my name. I have a knowledge in Chiruba is a thief. I've got eight knowledge. And when, when these knowledge were being flashed to me, the magistrate clearly read it out. Mr. Brebna Changala, the state has entered the knowledge, but it's not a discharge. Anytime they can arrest you, the matter is not closed. Now, under the new donor, that's the only change they have brought to loot. They have come to turn this knowledge into a cash cow. And the monies they are giving themselves are obscene. And the other problem I have, who is doing the assessment to say if a policeman points a gun at you, you are entitled to 450,000? <laughs> I don't know who is doing those assessments. Because when I look at this knowledge, Mumbi Piri has a knowledge. She was there for a year and plus. She, she might be just be awarded a one billion or, or two billion. If those who went in for 127 days with their kind were given 6.4 million, I think Mumbi Piri must be talking roughly uh, 60 million, 70. But that is banditry, that's criminal. I don't even know who brought that, uh, uh, that idea. Because these are consent judgment being done by the Ministry of Legal Affairs, which is in the hands of the UPND. And they are not even decent if they were clever enough. They were going to entice, because they know other people have got knowledge. They were going to invite uh, some people from other political parties to say, boy, but they are just sharing, looting the treasury. In the meantime, they tell you, PF left no money. It left no money. And they are sharing that money when the cancer hospital is literally on its knees. They are looting the money when there, is no, there are no drugs in hospital. What type of individuals are these? These are mercenaries. Elected mercenaries. I have no kind words. The money they are claiming, I'm entitled as well. But the conscience says, wait a minute. Yeah. As we go, the happenings on the mm -hmm. Kobabot province of Sina, I think a huge number of um, you know, miners that were trapped. It's been a week now. Today is Thursday. We have just clocked a week. You are a miner. I would do you know, a disservice if I don't ask you that question. Um... What went wrong, in your opinion? Everything has gone wrong. This country is going through a serious period of hunger. And people are taking risks to survive. That is a risk that one wouldn't undertake under any circumstances. And I've got it, you know, I was brought up in, on, on the Copa Belt. I heard from one of my colleagues there, if you don't die in that open pit mine, I'll still die of hunger. So it's the way you'll die. Um, I must encourage the government to do something about the youth unemployment. It's a time bomb. It is in their manifesto. I have seen it here, although they are not talking much about it. Uh, number two, in their own manifesto, 10 point, create quality jobs, particularly for the youth and women. Eradic number three, eradicate poverty and inequality. Is the, 
this is what they are supposed to spend time on and not on ECL and the PF. ECL and PF will be history if the UPND can deliver. People voted for UPND. It was not a military coup. It was an election that ushered in a better party and candidate to come and deliver and save this country from economic malaise and other inequalities. To come and repeat and replay the PF will not do. Deliver and this year will fall away. Deliver and the PF will fall away. You don't need to do this kind of shenanigan where you use the state to abuse a political party and its membership. You are dividing the country. You are playing with national security. And all I can say, God help us. Thank you. You are holding to the UPND manifesto you are from reading and the 10-point plans, you know. How much has been achieved from where you stand in the last two years of the UPND in line with what is embodied in that manifesto? Although it's not here, the removal of cadres, uh, free education, we give them kudos. But when it comes to the rule of law, one or zero up to ten, from zero to ten, I give them zero. The rule of law in this country is only in their heads. They have abused us, they have abused the instruments of power. And I don't know what tomorrow brings. Because they are not hesitating to find any loophole and get at somebody. Look at the way this thing of failing to account. Only a group of people can account. They don't want to account. But I want to send a message to them. You will account. What is good for a geese is good for a gander. And at that time, don't cry and ask us to say you are treating us like this because of where we were born from. You are treating us like this because of where we came from. The, your friends that you are harassing are not crying that song. They are facing the challenge that you have placed before them. Good Thank night. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for coming through. Thank you. Right. Mm. All right, I've been speaking to Mr. Brebina Changala, civil rights activist. Uh, thank you so much for having joined us this evening. And uh, my apologies that we were able to pick as many calls as, pos as possible. We had, um, of course, earlier, as, like, as earlier indicated, we had a challenge in terms of uh, the um, network. Otherwise, you've been watching State of the Nation with me, Innocent Piri. You can simply call me IP. May God bless Zambia. May God bless Mother Africa. Good night.